Hi, so we're here with um, Katie Worley, who's a, a paediatric physiotherapist, and she works uh, with all sorts of children uh, who've got a, a range of problems. Um, but um, I've been talking to her recently about something called selective dorsal rhizotomy, and I thought it might be quite nice just to interview her and just find out a bit more, bit more about what selective dorsal rhizotomy is, and particularly the physio requirements for patients that go through this procedure. So, hi Katie, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Good, great. So. Um, Selective dorsal rhizotomy is quite a mouthful, but just tell me a bit more about what, what it actually is. Yeah, selective dorsal rhizotomy, or SDR for short, um, is a surgical procedure um, where the spinal nerve roots are cut um, selectively under general anaesthetic. Um, it's an operation that is done with children who have cerebral palsy. Um, initially, the operation was done just in America, um, but over recent years, some procedures are being done in the United Kingdom as well. Um, the aim of the operation is to reduce the spasticity or get rid of the spasticity completely um, with children that have cerebral palsy. Okay, and, and so does it only really affect the legs or does it affect the arms as well? Generally, the candidates that usually have this procedure have more involvement with the legs. Um, because it's the nerve roots within the lumbar spine that are cut, it has more of an impact on the legs. However, a number of children that have quadriplegic, so four limbs, so the arms and legs involved, um, are also having the procedure. Because sometimes in these individuals, the arms appear to be worse because of the tone within the legs. So you can get some improvements in children with quadriplegia as well. Right, okay. And, and how do you go about you know, getting um, SDR then? Um, the number of parents contact um, the United States directly and they ask for a video assessment um, with the consultant. Um, within this country, generally you speak to your community paediatrician and they put a case forward to see if you would be um, suitable to go for an assessment. Um, the way it's going is they're hoping that some cases will be funded within the United Kingdom, but generally what's happening is parents are still having to pay a fee for the surgery at this precise time. Oh right, so presumably it's only the more, the more severe children that sort of get put forward for this treatment then, is that right? Um, not always, because obviously if your spasticity is too severe and it involves the arms, you might not actually be a suitable candidate. So sometimes the candidates have less severe cerebral palsy because actually they've got the more potential to improve following the surgery. Right. If that makes sense for you, it's, it's quite a complicated assessment process. So if you've got a lot of involvement and particularly difficulties with cognitive abilities, then the outcomes are less favourable. Whereas if you've got somebody that has increased tone, but it's mainly in the legs, and particularly if they've got good cognitive abilities to be able to undertake the therapy afterwards, then actually those are the individuals that are probably good candidates to have selective dorsal rhizotomy. Okay. And so you talked about the therapy afterwards. Isn't it just a case of, you know, you can have the operation and then you're okay? Or do you, do you need a lot of therapy afterwards? No, it is a huge amount of therapy afterwards because obviously these individuals have been, some of them moving around prior to surgery, but using that muscle tone to allow them to move. And when you get rid of that muscle tone, what you're left with is an underlying weakness um, that really needs intensive physiotherapy. So the recommendations would be around sort of five sessions of physiotherapy at least for six months post-op, and then looking at probably two to three sessions of physiotherapy for up to 18 months post-op, op, um, which is a, a huge commitment. Gosh, but, but presumably if they don't get that, then what happens if they don't get the physiotherapy? Um, I think, you know, um, obviously they would still make some gains following the surgery, but the main thing we see without good physiotherapy is actually the children do get walking, but often they walk with the legs turned in, they're really unstable around the hips, they develop bad walking patterns, and this surgery really is good for the future because if you get rid of that tone, hopefully the problems associated with your hips and your spine and deformities don't occur. 
if you have the surgery and then you walk in a really bad way afterwards, then you know the outcome wouldn't be as favourable. Oh, I see, right. So as well as choosing the right surgeon and getting all of that funded, you also have to get the choose the right physiotherapist. And, and is that funded by the NHS or, or not? No. I mean, often um, the physiotherapy will provide a level of physiotherapy coming back sorry, the NHS will provide a certain level of physiotherapy, but commonly that's six to 12 weeks physiotherapy at once a week, which is a long way off what would be recommended. Um, and, you know, there's lots of things that parents can do. They can, you know, get a tricycle, go horse riding, um, you know, go swimming, those activities. But actually, you, on top of that, you do need some additional physiotherapy to get the best outcome. Okay, because otherwise, ironically, you'll be too floppy, is that right? Yeah, certainly you have a level of weakness, and that can make walking quite difficult following the surgery. But longer term, because you haven't got to fight the spasticity, the outcomes are more favourable. But you do have a period of time, you know, up to probably two years, three years, where you've got the potential to really improve the child's gross motor skills. Right. So, Katie, you know, if you know, I've got a child that, that needs to go for the selective dorsal rhizotomy and, and I manage to find the surgeon that I want to do it and arrange for that to happen, it's gone through the assessment um, and they say, yes, it's okay, my child can go for the selective dorsal rhizotomy. What tips could you give me on how to choose the right physiotherapist to, to treat them, um, you know, up for the whole 18 months after the, the, the surgery? Well, certainly you do need a physio that has experience in paediatrics um, because the children are going to be coming for a length, a, a considerable length of time and you need somebody that knows how to engage with children and make therapy fun. Um, the average age of children that we're seeing that are going for this surgery are between the age of two and between the age of five. So you've got a very young child that can be difficult to engage anyway. So you do need somebody that is paediatric trained. Um, I think you really need somebody that lives locally to you, that's within the local area, um, because you are going to have to see them frequently and you don't want to be travelling for miles and miles um, to have physio. Um, quite a lot of people prefer somebody that um, can come to the house because it fits in better um, with their day-to-day -day life. Um, you want a therapist that's um, going to, um, you know, speak and liaise with the NHS team because they're going to be involved at the same time and it's useful to ensure that there's continuity in terms of information that you're being given and advice that you're being given as well. Um, I think you really need somebody that's had experience of managing selective dorsal rhizotomy um, because there's a number of precautions that you need to follow initially following the surgery and it's very, it's very different managing a child with a lot of weakness to somebody that's previously had a lot of muscle tone. Yeah, and I can see that's a big change. It's a big change for the family as well as, as, um, as, well as the child. Um, so um, that's really helpful. Thanks, Katie. Um, and so if someone were to come to, to you, for instance, what kind of experience could they expect to have if, if they were to, to ring you up and, and, and see whether or not you, know, you were the, the right physiotherapist for them? Okay, well at Hobbs Rehabilitation we have a number of therapists over a number of sites now. Um, we, we do have a clinic room which is child friendly so people can come to us, which some parents really love. Um, quite often they sit in the waiting room and have a cup of tea while we treat the child, which can be quite a nice welcome break. And sometimes they like to be involved in every step of the, of the way. Um, Majority of our therapists are Bogarth trained, so we've got a um, high level of expertise in managing children with altered muscle tone, whether it's high tone or low tone. Um, we are able to offer home visits um, within sort of 30, 40 miles from our three sites, um, which as I say can be useful for a number of families, particularly if they've got a busy schedule, the child's at school, they've got lots of appointments. Um, We've got really good local links with um, the paediatricians, um, the occupational therapists, the physiotherapists and the orthotics team and that really allows the liaison um, following the surgery and allowing a, a, you know, a unified approach to their management. 
Um, within HOPS as well, we have our own multidisciplinary team. So if people are finding that orthotics aren't suitable, the ones they're provided on the NHS, there is the possibility that they can access those services um, in addition to that as well. Wow, okay, so that's quite comprehensive and, and also lots of experience. And presumably you've got the capacity to kind of, you know, spend the time with us that, that we need and, and we can be seen by you what, every day, I guess, if we need to. Is that right? It is, yeah. Obviously, we wouldn't take a charge on that we weren't able to offer the level of intervention that they require. Um, and we have got an ever-expanding service at Hobbs because there is um, a huge demand at the moment for additional physiotherapy, um, particularly following selective dorsal rhizotomy. Um, but yes, we are able to offer intensive treatment blocks or, you know, if you're just looking for a once-a-week review in addition to your... Um, you know, NHS physio that we can provide just weekly treatment as well. It really depends on the needs of the individual and what, what they're looking for. Okay, well that sounds great. So, so Katie, if I wanted to get in touch with, with you or your team at Hobbs, um, what would be the best way for me to do that? Um, certainly the best way would probably be to have a look on our website, which is www.hobbsrehabilitation.co.uk. Um, we have a branch in Winchester, one in Lys, and a new branch in Shepton Mallet as well in the southwest. Um, otherwise, um, you can phone 01962 779796, which is our Winchester branch, and one of our therapists will be happy to speak with you. Okay, and if you rang the Winchester branch, that doesn't mean you have to be seen at Winchester, you could be seen at any of the others? No, definitely not. So um, they would be happy to point you in the right direction. Um, but that is sort of our main branch, really, where most of us tend to work, and then we're based out from there. Right, great. Well, that's been really helpful and really enjoyable talking to you, Katie. Thanks, thanks for spending some time with us. Not a problem. Thank you. Okay, take care.